Welcome back to Philadelphia, everyone, at the campus of the University of Pennsylvania, the class of 1923 arena, where the Drexel Dragons hockey team play their home games. They have welcomed Westchester University tonight, and after two periods, they've skated to a 2-2 tie alongside Brian Augsburger and also between the glass tonight, Jeff Skorup. I'm Michael Augsburger. It's great to have you with us on your Saturday night. The latest goal was scored by Bill Swall on a shot from the point. And uh, after the first two periods, after Westchester got off to a slow start, uh, what did you see in that in the first uh, two periods, Brian? Well, I saw much of the same. I, I thought it was a tale of two halves again. Um, mostly due the first half of, of that period w was all Drexel, mostly due to two penalty, two two costly pen penalties. Um, and then the the, la the latter half of the uh, the period, it was all Westchester, and you, that the score reflects that. Now, even though Drexel has had the majority of power plays. Westchester converted their power play at the end of that period to tie the game. Bill Swall was the one who fired that shot in. Horacek scored the opening goal of this game to make it 1-0 in the first period. And the Dragons, uh, Ryan Williams, sniped a shot from the slot from his left-handed stick high to the left side of Colgan to make it 2-1 Drexel. But then Swall, of course, tied the game for the Rams. Well, that's a good point. I think I think both teams are very, very vulnerable on the power play. So I think uh, whoever commits less penalties in this in this uh, period, I think they'll they'll be the winners at the end of this. We're getting ready for the third period. They drop the puck. Westchester skating from left to right in the all-black away jerseys. They've opted for those instead of the gold ones because Drexel's wearing gold themselves. They skate in on goal. The Drexel Dragons do. It was Carroll who skated in on the backhand on the left side, and Colgan turned it aside and then covered up. Ten seconds elapsed, and the third period is now underway in earnest. After ten seconds, the entirety of the first line for the Rams has skated off the ice. Drexel wins the draw and the shot comes in from Williams. It goes wide to the right. Wrapped all the way around and back out to the neutral zone. The Dragons send it back in. Colgan plays it behind his goal. Colgan steps around one man and then back out to Mango. Mango's pass goes across the entire ice and now Ryan Williams has it on the near side. Williams passes it ahead, and it goes off Swall at his own blue line and back behind. The Dragons change after 45 seconds played in the third period. Good deflection into the zone. It has to be played by Gravenstein after Horacek chipped it at the blue line. Desitel passes it ahead. He gets his own pass at the referee's crease and sends it into the zone. Swall can't corral that pass. And now at the blue line, intercepted by Tom Cole. He's on a breakaway. He's got Meyer. Meyer defending him. Backhand shot goes over the bar. Meyer did well to pressure him. The rebound comes all the way back out of the zone. 18.40 to play in regulation. We have a 2-2 tie as we ended last night's game. Meyer at the far, on uh, near side corner. His breakout pass is touched ahead by Benedice. Into the near side. It plays. Here's Meyer. Meyer chased by Leo Flick, just out of the outstretched stick. And now, here's Ferrara. Ferrara in on goal. Good defensive play by Semini. He centers the pass and hard into the boards there. One of the Dragons, we have a penalty coming up on Westchester. Carson Newton went headlong into the boards. And now the Dragons on the six on five. Shot comes in, gloved up by Colgan and the rebound came out into the slot but because it was touched by the Rams we have a stoppage in play we'll see who goes to the box and what the call is in fact perhaps boarding and that is the call face off will come to the left of Colgan and it's Wingett who goes to the box for the Rams the fourth penalty of the night one by the Dragons. Williams at the blue line. And now Churchvara pass deflected by McShane. But the Dragons still have it. Centering pass deflected over the bar and then into the corner. Churchvara at the blue line. He looks. Still looking. Passes to Carroll. Carroll at the near side circle. Into the corner. 
Passes to Williams. Williams skates behind the net. They wrap it all the way around. At the far side. Now I'll pass back out to the point for Churchvara. Churchvara winds the shot. Pad save by Colgan. Here's Williams in the corner, near side. Williams looking for a pass. Williams shoots. It's deflected in front. Never makes it to Colgan. Churchvara there. Now near side point. Churchvara skating away from McShane. He still has it. Still skating from McShane. He still has control in the corner. Good centering pass, but it goes through everyone. And Williams can't keep it in the zone. He passes far side. A minute played in the power play. All alone was Leo Flick, but the pass was just too far for him, and Drexel was lucky to catch that breather. Big hit on the near side from Flick. Here's Williams. Williams skates into the slot. Williams on the backhand, turns aside, and now passes here. Here's Rodriguez, shoots, deflected wide by Carroll. Behind the goal, Samini clears it. It wraps all the way from the far side to the near. Some beautiful passing by Drexel, just not able to capitalize, unfortunately. They have to take it behind their goal. 27, 20 seconds left in the power play. Westchester sends it in on Gravenstein, who directs it into the far corner. 13 seconds to play. Takes a tough bounce off the boards, but still Drexel has it. They break out and set up the power play again. Here's Benadou. Benadou shoots! Save by Colgan. Now Winget hops out of the box. Meyer has it. 15.56 to play. In regulation, 2-2 the score. The Dragons have it here, near side corner, Meyer plays it back to his defenseman after taking the hit from Jean-Louis. And now Shagan, Shagan with a big hit, but he was ready for it from Jean-Louis. And now Bionis with a back check, intercepts the puck. The pass from Swall is too far ahead. Icing's waved off as two players chase it there. Bionis has it in the corner, Shagan now steals it from him, penalty on Westchester, and we'll see, no. Drexel had control of the puck. We'll see who the penalty's on. That is an absolutely terrible penalty. His stick was on the ground, or it was on the ice, so he slapped it away from, from, the, uh, from the Westchester player. A terrible, terrible penalty. It's interference is the call, even though he slashed at the stick. It's Desitel who ends up in the box. 15-24, and deserved criticism there. A tough penalty to take. Zoldi must be pretty upset with that. And the Rams, after having killed a penalty of themselves, they now have the power play. Two minutes on the board for Desitel. They win the draw and have it in the Drexel zone. Behind the goal, here's Connor Walsh. Connor Walsh, the president of Westchester Hockey. And now Optenaker. Optenaker at the blind, the blue line. Gets it to the far side. Pass to Walsh. Behind the goal, Walsh stops there. He skates to the near side corner. He's checked into the boards. Now McShane has it. McShane out to the point for Optenaker. Thinks about the shot. Instead passes across the blue line. The shot comes in. It's deflected. Optenaker gets the rebound. He passes across the blue line again. Good pass here for McShane. He shoots and it's stopped by Michalik. And now coming way out of his goal to play it is Colgan. Optenaker can't control the pass. And it's chipped into the boards as Drexel changes. 108 left on the penalty. Westchester has it in their own zone. They break out of it. Good pass ahead for Bionis. Bionis skates across the blue line looking for a centering pass. He finds his man, Mango. But I'm sorry, Jean Louis. But his stick was held up with a good defensive play by Devlin. Drexel now sends it all the way down with 45 seconds left on the power play. Five on four for Westchester. Up the side is Horacek. Horacek stops at the near half boards. Gives to Jean-Louis. He thinks about the shot. Now winding up. Big shot and a great save from Gravenstein. Sliding from left to right across his goal. And Bill Swall is turned aside. 13.55 to play in regulation. 31 seconds, seconds left on the power play. Bionis to take the draw for Westchester. It's caught in their skates and finally won by Bionis to Jean-Louis. To the far side point for Swall. Rister is blocked by Devlin in the slot. Devlin gets the rebound in the corner. Four players are going at it there. Devlin doing a good job of killing time. 
Horacek finally skates away from the ruckus and now has it here. Back to Swall. Swall shoots! It's blocked by his own man, Jean-Louis, in the slot. And that kills the penalty. Bill Swall has it. Desitel comes out of the box. Bionis at the red line, crosses the blue line on the far side. Bionis tries to make a move, loses the puck. And now the Dragons have it. A tripping call on Westchester. Drexel has it here. Steven Villa shoots! He scores! Villa with a pass instead into the slot. And it was directed on the one-timer. Drexel takes the lead. The pass came. And it was Benedouce who directed it in. Steven Villa with the assists. And it's 3-2 Drexel. Well, you can tell how much that means to Drexel, how, how excited they were after that one. Not only does it take the lead, but it was a beautiful setup. Um, just a beautiful, beautiful goal. Bill Swall would have gone to the penalty box for tripping, but because Drexel scored, they should be taking that off the board. Jeff, score up is between the glass down there, and we'll see what he sees. Thanks, Mike. I just got a chance to talk to Coach Zoldi down there. He's very happy with the way his team has played, especially since the midpoint of the game there in the second period. I asked him what they're going to have to do to uh, break the tie here in the second period, which they just did. He told me he wanted to see him forecheck stronger. He wanted to see some strong plays through the neutral zone and, and really just skate out there. Um, they've been skating well. Westchester, uh, has they, they've not been as strong on the, on the puck as Drexel, and they're looking good for him so far here, 3-2. to two. Thanks a lot, Jeff. They're still looking at things down there. The referees are discussing matters with the Westchester players on the bench. Swall is adamant that... This penalty should not be on the board right now, even though, or especially because of the fact that Drexel scored, but perhaps this penalty came afterward. I'm not sure what happened here. Swall really shouldn't be in the box right now, but it's five on four for Drexel. 13.04 left to play in regulation, and they have the one goal lead. Drexel wins the draw at center ice, and Ryan Williams skates in across the blue line. Williams. Loses control of the puck there after a good check. And Gravenstein just sticks it ahead for Churchvara after the Westchester clearance. Churchvara skating around in his own zone. He is shadowed there by Whitaker. They gain the zone now. And the shot comes in across the crease and just missing the far post. Cam Neely has it. Neely looking for an opportunity. They are in no rush, the Dragons with 12-24 to play in regulation. Churchvara winds and fires, and Carroll was blocking the view of Colgan, but Colgan gloves it and holds on. Face-off will be dropped to the left of Colgan. Again, who's looked impressive in his third start for the Rams in his collegiate career. Mickey McShane wins the draw against Neely, but Neely wins the race to the far corner to get the puck. Westchester then steals it from him and sends it the length of the ice. 12.08 to play in regulation. 3-2 Dragons having erased a 1-0 lead and then avenged their 2-1 lead, which was lost to the Bill Swall goal. Pass ahead to Ryan Williams. Williams jumps it in on the near side. Westchester tries to chip it out of the zone, but it's gloved by Williams. He takes a hit to keep it in the zone, and then the shot comes in. It goes wide to the right. Colgan had to watch it there. Centering pass, shoots, and then Colgan makes the pad save. Ryan Williams gets the rebound in the corner. Williams looking for a pass, finds his man behind the goal. He's still holding on to it. Now Rodriguez shoots, saved by Colgan. It went right into his chest. And with 11.27 seconds left to play, 3-2 is the score. Still 23 seconds left on the Swall penalty. And again, that was the source of a lot of confusion because it was called on the other end of the ice in the Drexel zone. One of the Dragons went down on the trip, and Drexel went the length of the ice. They scored, which ordinarily would wipe off the penalty. But Swall indeed is sitting there in the box. 18 seconds left on his penalty. 
Drexel wins the draw. Here's Meyer at the point. Meyer passes inside for Rodriguez. Now in the corner, back out to the point for Meyer, who shoots! And it's deflected wide by Ottenacre's skate. Five seconds left on the power play. Drexel still has it in the Westchester zone. Good move in the near circle. They shoot! Save made by Colgan, and now keeping it in Meyer. Penalties over, and Swalls back out on the ice. Benedus in the corner. Passes back out for Meyer at the point. Back to Benedus in the corner. But Samiti's there to intercept that pass. Four players fighting for it. Rodriguez comes out with it, but then Samiti steals it from him. And Westchester breaks out. Here's Swall. Swall's got Mango on his left. He sends it in instead. 10.35 to play. The players race for it there. Mango. And now passing here for Horacek, but he couldn't keep it. Here's Newton along the left side. Two on two. Newton's got shaken in the middle. He looks. He wraps around the goal. He shoots high. Saved by Colgan. The rebound comes out to Devlin on the near side. He shoots. He scores. Shagan from the pass from Ferrara in the corner. And Shagan was waiting in the crease. Great one-time shot. And he beats Colgan on the right side to make it 4-2 Drexel. I was just about to say that Drexel seems to be having some kind of phobia with the center. They keep shooting from the ang from the from the wings and not creating the angle, but right there, shooting from this or passing to the center and shooting from there, and a great goal. And how did Shagan get so open there in the crease? Especially five on five. Ten minutes to play in the third period. And Drexel out. Huge hit behind the goal and a centering pass. And Ferrara's shot was blocked in front. Ten minutes to play. It's 4 2 Drexel. Laughlin has it behind the goal here in Philadelphia at Pennsylvania's campus. Laughlin now backhands it out of the zone and he finds his man. Here's McElroy. McElroy across the blue line. He's stripped of the puck there, but Whitaker keeps it in the zone. Back to McElroy. And then finally. It's Whitaker. Whitaker here in the slot. Jean Louis loses the puck. Big hit here on the near side, and some afterwards between McElroy and Steven Villa. Drexel has it behind their own goal. They chip it out of the zone. Swall gloves it in the neutral zone and slaps it back in. It wraps around far side to near side. Gravenstein couldn't come up with it, and now Westchester has it here at their own blue line. Long pass ahead for Jean-Louis from Swall. He makes it, but Jean-Louis is content to just dump it in. Good forecheck there from Westchester, and now wide open in front. Tom Cole shoots, and it goes wide to the right. He was wide open in the slot, and it was actually Curtis on the shot. Swall intercepts the pass at the red line. Westchester now trying everything they can to get back in the game. 8.40 to go. Swall shot his glove by Gravenstein easily. And we'll have a face-off inside the Drexel zone. This has really been a story of lack of good opportunities for Westchester. Drexel having a lot of good opportunities. Westchester shooting from far away, not passing into the center, just not having good opportunities on net. They've just announced the winner of the 50-50 raffle here at Drexel's Arena. 8.30 to play. All the way down, this will be icing on Westchester. And that only ate up about 10 seconds of play. 8.28 to play in regulation. And the Dragons have a 4-2 lead. Westchester won the first game of this season series up at Hatfield, which is where Drexel plays some of its other home games when they can't play here at Penn. And then last night at Ice Line at Westchester's home arena, Drexel won in the shootout after a 2-2 draw. Drexel wins the draw in the Westchester zone, but Tom Cole comes up with the puck. Cole is hip-checked hard by Michaelich, and now centering for Cole, but intercepted by Drexel. That's chipped up high along the boards, and here's Ryan Williams, makes a nice move, and now passes across for Hagen, and it's chipped up and gloved by Colgan, who holds on for the faceoff. From here, next weekend, Westchester will play Delaware, and they will go to Fred Rust Ice Arena on Friday night, where there's a great atmosphere at the Delaware Games, and then on Saturday afternoon, they will go and play the back end of that doubleheader back at Ice Line.
We'll get to Drexel's schedule next weekend in just a second as the faceoff comes ahead on the far circle inside the Westchester zone. Westchester has control. It's off Bionis' skate and into the Drexel zone where Meyer and Bionis fight each other for possession. Into the near side corner they go. A couple other players join them and then Drexel comes up with it. Kenosian sends it into the zone. He's hit by Lachlan, but not before. He dumps it in for Colgan to play behind the net. 7.34 to play. Shot comes in. It's deflected over the bar from the point and into the near side corner. Near side point now. Meyer tries to keep it in, and he can't do it for very long. And icing is called on Drexel. 7.24 on the clock here at Penn's Arena. 4-2 Drexel against Westchester. The Drexel schedule next weekend looks like this. They just came from playing Towson and Lehigh. They will host Towson next weekend and also Penn State Burks, who while they're down here will play Westchester later on next week. Seven oh nine to play in regulation and Westchester who had a one nothing lead has seen that lead evaporate. Shot comes in from the far circle by Drexel. It wraps all the way around to the near side. And then McElroy drops it for Jean-Louis. Jean-Louis finds his man in a great move at center ice by Optenaker. Jean-Louis fires the wrist shot. Knocked down by Gravenstein. And a couple of players now push each other in front of him as he covers up in the slot. 6.49 to play in the third period. 4-2 Drexel. Face off to Gravenstein's left. Gravenstein got the rest last night. Jeremy Wick got his first ever start in his college career as Westchester takes the win off the face off and Optinaker throws it on goal, but it's over the bar. It wraps around to the far side half boards where Gun uh, Rodriguez wins control of the puck there. He sends it here to the near side corner and Drexel shovels it into the Westchester zone. Westchester plays it high off the boards. Opton Aker tries to stop it in the neutral zone, but it's jumped on there by Churchvara, and he skates back behind his own goal. He wastes a little bit of time there as Horacek is shadowing him. Horacek now finally goes after him. So does Bionis. Long pass ahead for Rodriguez. And he would have had a good shot on goal, but he was offside as he collected that pass at the blue line. 6.04 to play in regulation, and it's still a two-goal lead for Drexel. Face off to Gravenstein's right inside the zone because the pass came from so far away on the offside. Face off, one by Walsh. They send it into the corner. Walsh gives chase, and so does McShane. But Drexel has control. Long pass ahead for Hagen. Hagen at the corner. He shoots. Big rebound in front, but Westchester sweeps it aside into the corner. Here's Williams. Williams gives to Carroll. Back behind the goal. Hagen back to Carroll. Carroll is hit hard there behind the goal. McShane has it now on the near side. Can't clear the zone. Sent back in by Michalik. Intentionally wide to the right side. Centering pass from Hagen. Back out for McCulloch. And then McShane has to watch it go past him. Joseph Gibbs tries to clear the zone. It's deflected away from him. Sent to the near side. And here is Downing. Downing tries to get past a man. Can't do it. And it's shipped out of the zone by Drexel. Pass ahead. Whitaker. Sends it in on Gravenstein. Gravenstein drops it off for one of his men. And now Jean-Louis shoots and it goes wide to the left. Never troubles Gravenstein. Last five minutes of play in the third period. 4-2 Drexel. Church Vara drops it back behind his goal. Drexel, nifty passing in their own zone. That's twice now that Jean-Louis has, has given up some space to take a shot from way out. Here's Drexel. They send it into the zone. Back behind the goal. Westchester plays it there. Swall against Neely. 
Neely has it now. Neely tries to center it. It's deflected off a of Westchester skate, and Meyer can't keep it in the zone. He just has to send it in on Colgan. Colgan sticks it, and Kyle Lachlan skates up ice. His pass over to the near side for Whitaker. Doesn't make it to him, but McElroy tries to fight with it. Now Whitaker has it. Whitaker shoots. Save made with a glove. And Gravenstein holds on with 4-11. Left on the board in the third period here in Philadelphia. The Dragons can walk to this arena. Westchester has to take a ride of about 45 minutes to get here. They used to be conference foes because of the proximity, but Drexel has left since then for another conference. But they still keep up the rivalry each year. Here's Meyer now. Meyer skating out of his own zone at the red line. Less than four minutes to play in regulation. Downing behind the goal. Sends it for Bionis. Bionis is met by Ferrara, who just dumps it in, and Westchester will take it in the near side corner. Opton Aker. Nice pass for Bionis. Bionis gives to Horacek. Horacek shoots. Goes for the right side. And he missed. Not by much. Rebound comes out to the far side corner. And Drexel has it now. Near side corner. Chased. And now out in front. Bionis. Great save by Gravenstein. On the pad to deny Bionis. 3.23 to play. And if Swall is thinking like Patrick Wall, he may try to get the extra attacker on early because of the two-goal disadvantage here. We're still a long ways away. 3.23 to play. Face off of the far circle. Horacek taking the right option on that one, on that two-on-one. Two on but he, he's got to put it on net on that one. Didn't miss by much. He just missed the top right corner. Gravenstein would have really struggled to get to that. Face off, won by Drexel, and they pin it up against the boards where Michalik fights against Winget and also Tom Cole in the corner. He's already eaten 18 seconds here. Now Leo Flick gets it back out to the point. Swall sends it in. It's gloved down, and then Gravenstein shows the referee that he is the one who has caught that. That was a dangerous play. Gloved out of the air by Church Vara, but he wasn't able to glove it down. And even if he could have gloved it down, it would have gone right into the slot, into all that traffic. In fact, he gloved it up higher into the air. And the tip ball, as it were, was finally caught by Gravenstein. The goaltender's not afforded as much protection here in hockey as they are in soccer. And some of the bodies that went up against Gravenstein, he could easily have lost out on that. But he was the one who made the catch. And Swall will take his timeout. 2.53 to play in regulation, and the Golden Rams are down two against the Dragons of Drexel. We'll send it down to Jeff Skorup, who's between the glass for this timeout. What do you think Swall's talking about between this, uh, these face-offs here? Well, you can tell they've already started doing it with the, within the last two or three minutes. They're really pushing in the offensive zone, really trying to pressure Drexel uh, on their defensive end, trying to force some turnovers. It's working well so far, but they haven't put the puck in the net. They're going to need two here real quick. We'll see what they can do. When do you think Swall pulls his goaltender? Uh, well, you've seen the trend these days, pulling them sooner and sooner. I wouldn't be surprised if he pulls them around two minutes here, maybe even before that. He might want to take advantage of this opportunity because of the face-off inside the zone. And it looks like your prediction's right, Jeff. And Swall is going to pull the goalie here with this much time remaining. He's going to try to take advantage of the face-off inside the Drexel zone. To Gravenstein's right. The extra attacker is on for the Golden Rams to try to make up the two-goal disadvantage right now. Wing it. Loses the draw. And it's sent all the way down. This will be icing on Drexel. It only ate a little bit of time, and that's the, the risk that you play. That was almost in on goal. It missed by about 10 feet. Extra attacker was not on for Westchester momentarily and McElroy races back out to try to get involved in the play. Face off one by Westchester by Horacek. 
And now in the far corner, at the point now, McElroy shoots, it goes wide to the left. Gravenstein watches it go. It's picked up there behind. And now McElroy on the doorstep. McElroy tries to poke at it. A bunch of players there fight for it. And the referees really have to call that play a little bit earlier because no one knows where the puck is. And now the goal's off its moorings. And you can see, actually, a couple of players going to each other's heads with their gloves. 2.27 to play in regulation. And Drexel still has the 4-2 lead. Face off on the near side circle. The Jonas will take it against Ryan Williams. Extra attacker on for Westchester. Williams wins the draw, but they can't clear it out of the zone. Swall keeps it in, and Horacek's here. Here's Hagen. Hagen clears it out. It goes all the way down. Icing's waved off because Optenaker could have played it. Carroll and Optenaker fight for it in the Westchester zone with the open net. But Optenaker wins that battle. And Bionis, great passing. Now onto the left side. McElroy drops it ahead. Here's the shot deflected wide by McElroy. And then back out in front. McElroy behind the goal. He has control. 155 to play. Here's Optenaker. Swall back to Optenaker. Back to Swall. Swall skates around. Now Optenaker who shoots the wrister. And it's blocked in front by Ryan Williams. Back to Swall at the point. Swall passes ahead for Jean Louis. Jean Louis off the boards. Finds Optenaker with a good pass. Swall winds up the one timer. It's deflected wide before it makes it to Gravenstein. 130 to play. Westchester looking for two goals. Bionis is trapped up against the near side corner boards. Drexel now has control. They send it all the way down, and that's an empty net goal. Scored by Hagen. And that should polish off the game for the Dragons. Hagen's empty net goal from his own blue line makes it 5-2. to two. And Brian Swall went with the risky strategy with about three minutes of empty net play. Westchester had a great run in the Drexel zone, but that's the risk that you take. They did, and it is the risk that you take. I think uh, younger Swall, number 11, I think he had a couple of opportunities to, to shoot there. I think he had a couple of poor passes, poor decisions, but uh, that goes along with, with the game. You can't do much about it. One minute left to play in regulation. Drexel just trying to eat up the clock with a three-goal lead. Long pass ahead, and the shot comes in. Good save from Colgan. Pass out in front, and Benenuch scores! And that's the icing on the cake. Six to two is the score. Drexel leads with 51 seconds to play. Benenuch scored on a wide open net. You can't fault Colgan on that one. No, you can't. This score really isn't indicative of, of how the game is going. It's been pretty, pretty evenly matched. Um, you know, the slight edge to Drexel, obviously, in, in every department. They've been faster. They've hit a bit more. Um, th their chances have been better. But um, you have pretty evenly matched still. It has been, especially when you look at the, the previous meetings between these two teams. And Swall, the head coach himself, said that these two teams, out of almost everyone else that they play, are almost among the most evenly uh, matched up. So Drexel, it's tough to beat a team twice in one season. And uh, Drexel is going to end up doing that to Westchester um, if you count the shootout. Again, they skated to a tie last night. 23-7. 23 seconds left on the clock as Drexel has it in their own zone here. Tom Cole fighting for the puck there. And in the slot, the Dragons will skate it out of their zone. Carson Newton chipped into the near side uh, zone. And the Dragons, with eight seconds left, will skate around. Wing it tries to fire it in on goal. And the players know that it's over now. 6-2 to two is the final. Again, it was 4-2. And the empty net goal made it 5-2. It was a much closer game than this final is going to attest. 6-2, to two, Drexel wins against Westchester as the two teams line up to shake hands. Westchester again will head to Delaware just uh, down 202 in the 95 on Friday night next week at Fred Rust Ice Arena to take on the Blue Hens. And then the Blue Hens will return the trip uh, on Saturday to play the Golden Rams at Ice Line. Drexel from here will host Penn State Burks next weekend at this very arena. Again, the final score, Drexel 6, Westchester 2. And for everyone here on the Westchester Radio Network, especially my colleagues, 
down on the ice, Jeff Skorup and Brian Augsburger alongside me here in the press box. I'm Michael Augsburger. We're so glad you could join us on your Saturday night and make us a part of it. And we'll hope you join us when we're at Delaware next week for our next broadcast on Friday night. Again, 6-2 to two the final score, Drexel over Westchester.